ICE modeling in Softimage lets you build or modify polygon meshes procedurally. Procedural geometry is geometry that is created automatically by an algorithm rather than being created manually. This can be useful for when you need many instances of objects and you don't want to create or duplicate each one by hand. You can use ICE modeling to create complex and sophisticated procedural effects but you can also use it to create simple effects, such as a forest, as we will show in this video. While there are other ways to duplicate and clone objects, this method is quite simple and quick to set up, and it's easy to make changes when you need to. The director wants to have more trees? No problem. Now he wants more randomization? Easily done. Any changes you make to the original polygon mesh object are automatically inherited by its copies. And you can easily swap out the current object and replace it with another one. So, let's get started. Switch to the ice tree layout which displays the ice tree view across the bottom of the window. And middle click the viewport icon to switch to landscape mode. Start off the building process by using this simple polygon mesh tree that will be the basis for all the trees in the forest. The tree's center has been moved to its bottom so that all subsequent scaling on the tree will be done from there and not its middle. Now create the forest floor by getting a polygon mesh grid object. Press G to hide the scene grid so that you can see what's going on. Name the grid ground and increase its U and V length values and its U and V subdivisions. Now you need to get an empty polygon mesh object, which will be the container object for the trees of the forest. You often use empty polygon meshes in ice modeling as containers because they can have ice trees on them, but they aren't rendered. Name the empty mesh forest. This object will hold the ice tree that will procedurally generate copies of the tree to make the forest. With the forest object selected, choose Create Ice Tree in the Ice Tree view, which creates an ice tree operator in the forest's modeling stack. Make sure that the lock icon is on so that this ice tree remains active when you select other objects in the scene. In the preset manager on the left of the ice tree, Click the Task tab and select Topology to display the ice compounds used for modeling. Scroll down the list and select the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh compound and drag it into the Ice Tree workspace. Don't be alarmed that this node is red. It's just waiting for you to give it some data. You're going to tell it which polygon mesh it should copy, which is the tree. Select this object, press F3 and drag its name into the Ice Tree view. Note that you could also drag and drop its name from the regular explorer. This creates a get data node with the tree object already specified. Plug the tree node's out name output into the source polygon mesh name port on the create copies from polygon mesh node. Now plug the execute output from the create copies from polygon mesh node into the first port on the ice tree node. The Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node turns from red to purple to indicate that everything's working, and you should now see two grey trees. The trees are grey because the forest object automatically inherited the default scene material when it was created, as all new objects do. Looking at a forest of grey trees is rather dull, so let's use the green material from our original tree instead. Choose Render Modify Materials or press Ctrl 7 to open the Materials Manager. With the forest object selected, drag and drop the forest material on that object. Now back to the ice tree. Double click the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node to open its property editor where you can set the number of copies to how many trees you want. You can also set the position values to specify how far apart they are from each other along these axes. You can leave the X and Z values as they are because you're going to override them in a second anyway. You can now hide the original tree mesh by pressing the H key, since you don't want it to interfere with the rest of the scene. 
Instead of having the trees in a line, we want to place a tree at each vertex or point on the ground object. So let's drag the ground object into the ice tree view. You first want to make sure that the number of trees created is equal to the number of points in the ground object. To get this data, open the Grounds Get Data Property Editor, click the Explore button, and select the Number of Points attribute. Plug its value output to the Number of Copies port, and the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node is now using the Grounds Number of Points as the number of trees to generate. However, the trees are still stretching out along the X and Z axes instead of being at each point on the grid. Why is that? It's because they're being incremented by the position X and Z values we set in the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node. We'll override that value by setting each tree's position to match each point on the ground, starting with the Transform Per Copy compound. Plug its Execute on Copy output into the port of the same name on the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node. Open its Property Editor and change the translation X and Z values. You can see that all of the trees move at once, but we want to control the position of each tree separately. To do that, we need a few nodes. First, we need to get the point position information from the ground object. Instead of creating a new node, we'll save time by copying and pasting the ground get data node that's already in the tree. Note that you can also use the standard Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste nodes in the ice tree. Open its Property Editor and select the Point Position attribute instead of Number of Points. Next, we need a node to contain a list of the point positions, which will be the Build Array from Set node. An array is simply an ordered list of values, which is necessary to use when you have more than a single value to work with. In this case, the values are each of the ground's point positions. We'll type the name of this node in the search field to find it, since it's not in the topology compound group. Plug the value output from the ground.pointPosition node into its value port. Each item in the array has an index number, starting from zero, so we'll use a getCopyIndex compound to get those index values. Finally, we'll get a Select an Array node to use these index values to position each tree copy on each point in the grid. Plug the Out output from Get Copy Index into the Index port of this node, then plug the Array output from Build Array from Set into its Array port. Finally, plug the Value output from Select an Array into the Translation port of Transform per Copy. Now a tree should be created at each point on the ground object. If they're not, as in our case, make sure that the position values in the Create Copies from Polygon Mesh node are at zero. There, that's better. If you change the size or subdivisions of the ground object, you can see how the number of trees updates to match the position and number of its points. Our forest is looking too much like a reforestation project instead of a more natural forest, so we need to add some variation to it. In the Transform Per Copy node, change the translation variance values in X and Z to randomize the position of the trees on the ground. We'll also vary the tree's size by increasing the scale Y value and changing the scaling variance values. It's important that the scaling variance values are no more than double their scale value equivalent, since this represents a maximum positive and negative scale value. We'll also add a very slight rotation variance, which adds variation on all three rotation axes. With this base setup, you can customize your forest and landscape as you like. For example, you can use the Ice Deform Create Sculpt command, or any deform operator you like, to move the points on the ground object.
Then the trees that are generated will follow the deformation of the ground object. You can also delete some points or polygons from the ground object, which will remove the trees in those areas. In this space, you could add other trees or even a house to create more detail. As you can see, it's easy to do what you want with procedural modeling in ICE. In the next video, we'll show how to add random materials and textures to the trees in our ICE forest.